Hey! Oh my gosh, okay, I feel like I haven't done this in so long. Little life update before I go into what I wanna talk about today. Um, so your girl got shingles. Yeah. So. <sighs> trying to rest up on that. Meds are making me really sleepy. Like I almost could nap instead of doing this video. Um, but it's getting better. So it's August, it's mid August, and a lot of people are going back to school <laughs> to teach. That was what teachers do. And as you know, like I was a first year teacher last year. I taught seventh grade math and science. Holy boys. Um, I learned a lot, not just about teaching and education, but I learned so much about myself and how to create relationships with people and develop and build relationships with people, not just seventh graders, but also people I worked with. If you are a first year teacher, let me just say, every day you're going to feel like you don't know what the heck you're doing or you're gonna feel like is this the right job for me you have no idea how normal that is so if you feel like you have no clue what you're doing or if the lesson that you're going to teach is effective or if your classroom management is effective you're literally not gonna know you just gotta go with your gut that's what makes teachers so great they have an awesome gut and they just go for it and most of the time it works and if it doesn't guess what you come back the next day and you try again even though i was only a first year teacher i have a few tips for first year teachers these are things that i honestly did not think about um they are things that i didn't really realize i needed to do so here are my five tips on how to conquer your first year of teaching number one this one is probably the most important one. The first tip I wanna give first year teachers is actually not nothing to do with a student or nothing to do with other teachers or lesson plans. It's literally about the parents. When a parent emails you, remember, do not take it personally and you know more than the parent knows. I had so many parents emailing me telling me that their child said this happened in class, or I said this, or they are struggling because of me. And I would get really upset because half the time, no, most of the time it was not true. And I personally take things very personally. For the longest time, I thought the parents were always right, but then I realized, no. I'm the one in the classroom with their child. I'm the one educating them. I'm the one that sees what happens in the classroom. I'm right. So in the first half of the year, I didn't really stick my grounds with, t with parents. I kind of danced around the issue or I really didn't address what was going on properly. But then halfway through the year, I was like, no, I'm the one that sees what happens in the classroom. So whatever I say in the email or the phone call, it's true. I'm not gonna make up a story about their child. I need to stand firm in my truth on what happens in the classroom and be honest with this parent. You don't have to be scared of the parents. Some may come on more aggressive than others, especially if you're a new teacher. Some parents might pull the whole like, I'm older than you, I know more than you. No, you know more than the parents do. You see what's going on in the classroom. Stand firm and know your truth. Number two, second tip. Keep a list of all the Christmas gifts that you get and all the end of year gifts that you get from your students so you can give them a thank you card. Like, I feel like I should have known this before going in to teaching. Like, I feel like that's just like a, a common sense, but it really wasn't to me. And then I thought later, I was like, oh, that would have been really nice if I could give thank you cards, but I have no clue what kid got me what. Uh, make a list of what student gives you what and send them a thank you card honestly it's really gonna mean a lot to them three this was probably the biggest mistake that i made in my first year of teaching do not set up your school email on your phone yes i know that you are a teacher 24 7 and yes you should be available for your students especially in middle school and high school you should be available for your students outside of the classroom if they have questions about homework 
or their grades on um, like if you have power school or jump rope whatever you use for a grading system however you don't need to be available every waking moment that you are awake if you have your email on your phone and you're eating dinner you're gonna see that email pop up and you're gonna feel obligated to email that parent or that student or that um, colleague back this is what I highly recommend when you leave the school do not check your emails until about 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. Check your emails, then shut off your laptop. That way, you can still have a little bit of freedom outside of your classroom and your parents and your students and your colleagues. I would be like working out and I would get an email from a student and I would stop my workout to email them back. That's, n that's not okay. That's, that is going to drive you insane. So, no email set up on your phone don't do it four don't forget to have fun with your kids yes it is very important to stay with your scope and sequence of your units of your books of your curriculum it's very important to stay on task however have fun with your kids i got so wrapped up with this whole scope and sequence and what lesson i had to do what day and what activity i had to do another day and i had to stay with the other math teacher I got so wrapped up with that, I forgot to have fun some days. There are going to be some Fridays before vacation where you are going to want to pull your hair out because kids are crazy and they just want to go on vacation. That's when you make a decision to scrap your lessons and play math basketball and play Jeopardy and play these games that are fun for them and also fun for you. And if you can find a game where they're still doing work but it doesn't seem like they're doing work oh those are the best games <laughs> just have fun with them it's so easy to get distracted on what you need to do and what you need to accomplish by june it's so important for you and the students honestly okay number five and th everyone says this every every teacher says this is the top tip on how to survive your first year four words take care of yourself this kind of goes in with the emails i told you about to not have it on your phone but honestly you come first you are going to easily want to put your students first but if your cup is not full how are you going to fulfill 20 other students cups you need to be happy taken care of positive and excited for this job and that's not going to happen if you do not spend some alone time some self-care time and some me time make sure you are doing the things you love the things that make you healthy the things that help you sleep at night the things that make you you sometimes people don't realize how on a teacher has to be the whole whole day you have to be absolutely on your a game positive excited happy there for all of your students and that's not going to happen if you don't make you a priority outside of school so eat healthy don't skip breakfast because you have to get to school early Find a superfood shake if you can't have if you can't get breakfast right away. Like find something quick and easy. Exercise. Join a gym. Run a couple times a week. Try a workout program. There's so many different exercises and programs that you can do if you're busy. I know a coach that can help you find the right program for you if you'd like. Sleep. Oh my god, get sleep. Eight hours. That almost sounds impossible, but it's not. I woke up every morning at 4 a.m., so I made sure my butt was in bed by 8 p.m. That eight hours is crucial. Hear me out. Getting your rest and eating healthy and being positive is way more important than finishing a dang lesson. You just showing up for your students in a positive manner is way more important than how you're gonna teach fractions. Students need you to be your absolute best for me i made sure that every day i worked out that i meal prepped and planned on sunday so i had all my healthy meals for breakfast lunch and dinner um, i read personal development as well as professional development i made sure i got eight hours of sleep i made sure that um, i made my bed every morning oh it's so nice getting into a made bed at night 
Um, I made sure that I turned off my emails at night by the end of the school year. Um, and I made sure that I saw the people who matter most to me and got out of my house. Take care of you. Promise you won't regret it. And neither will your students. They will appreciate it, honestly. You're going to have a rocking first year. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited for you. Let me know if this is something that you thought was helpful. Did you like it? Follow me at your main chick because I seriously want to see, I want to see classrooms. I don't know. It's like my, one of my favorite things. Love you guys. Yeah. <laughs>